morning, Feng Ling. Good morning, everyone. So uh, today uh, we have the third part of our uh, COVID-19 webinar series organized by the Society of uh, Behavioral Health Singapore. So it's my great honor to introduce our speaker, uh, Ms. Susan Dan. Hi, Susan. So Susan is an executive member of our society. Uh, she is also the founder of ECI Consulting Holdings, which is a public health focused social enterprise. So Susan holds a master in lifelong learning from the University of London. She's also an experience and active mindfulness practitioner and trainer. So without further ado, uh, I think Susan, are you ready now? Yeah. I pass to Susan now, yeah. So Susan will talk about emotional resilience uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic and also social responsibility. Hi, right, Susan, yeah, please yeah, go ahead. Hi, uh, yes, good morning, everybody. Uh, very glad uh, to be talking, uh, sharing my views uh, this morning with everybody. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. Let me share my screen. Right, so this morning we are going to um, talk, talk about Building emotional resilience and to enhance uh, social responsibility. And yesterday, I think uh, with the new um, news uh, from PM, uh, our social responsibility is practiced in a slightly different way now. So today, my talk will look at the what, the why, and the how. So, firstly, the what. Everybody is uh, very um, familiar with the what social responsibilities that we should be practicing right now. And I happened to get this uh, bingo sheet uh, from my Facebook. And I think that uh, it's very interesting. And so I kind of uh, want to share this with everybody. Uh, I particularly like uh, practicing good personal hygiene, which is uh, wearing a mask. Uh, and uh, Yesterday we were said we were told that we can actually wear a mask even when we are well and we are out, uh, but wear a reusable mask instead of uh, competing with the mask that the healthcare professional need. Uh, do not doctor hop, see the same doctor, and most of all, uh, practice social distancing, stay at home. So among all this, uh, I think some of it is quite funny, like do not hot food or toilet paper and. Uh, this is what we are doing now to telecommute for meetings and gatherings. So uh, I, I thought this, this is quite interesting. So why, why do we need to practice um, social distancing? Uh, which I think most of you know by now as well, that uh, every one of us can make a world of difference. Uh, we can save the world if we choose to. Uh, we don't have to be Superman to save the world right now. And also, I'd like to just have a recap from Assistant Professor Alex's uh, lecture uh, last week. Uh, for some of you who did not join us, um, this is what he said, uh, how we actually look at the reproduction number of the virus. And so the reproduction number is actually looking at um, the number of people in your social network and, uh, and when you go out, uh, who you come in contact with while you're infected. And then there's this probability of the virus being transmitted. And then there's this um, post whether you will be affected. And so we like to bring this number to close to zero. But right now for the virus, this number stands at about two to three. And so imagine if we are infected and then we go out, we will infect another two or three people. And worst of all, if we are not sure uh, we were then, uh, we, we don't know that we are infected, then we are going out unwittingly infecting people. And therefore, uh, this is what we are seeing now. There are a lot more local cases and uh, some of the local cases are untraceable, unlinked, right? And that is the worrying part. And therefore, we are now entering a new phase of community transmission. And uh, according to the Straits Times, the next two weeks are crucial. And yesterday we heard it from the ministers, we heard it from the PM. So let's see what we can do, the how, right? So I'd like to show this video. I thought that uh, it's quite meaningful. Some of you might have seen it on your social media already.
So would you be the one who uh, decide to step out so that we can stop the fire? So the how. Um, I like to quote PM Lee and he said that, well, our response has been great so far is because of the social and psychological resilience of our people. And he said that quite a few times in different ways. And yesterday he said it again. So, and he said that the COVID-19 will be with us for a long time and there must be things that we get used to, like uh, good hygiene, hand washing, uh, don't gather in large group, uh, changing our social norms. And so social resilience is really vital for us to combat the virus and recover as a stronger community. And resilience is about the individuals and the communities adapting successfully to stress right now and to changes that we have to adopt uh, consistently uh, in our everyday life. So the, the things that we have to do uh, to behave in a socially responsible way may change as the situation changes. And so emotional resilience is what we are going to talk about today, really, the how. Uh, it is really not about the winning the battle, but it is really about the strength to power through the storm. And this particular storm, the COVID-19 storm, is really a bad one and, and this storm doesn't just hit us here in Singapore but it's globally and everybody is trying to keep steady our sail. And there, therefore to do that we need to um, empower ourselves to see that this is temporary and and we need to keep changing through the, I, I wouldn't say pain and sufferings but you know things that we are not used to, things that might be a little inconvenience, uh, having to uh, walk one meter away from uh, other people and you cannot gather with your uh, next of kids if you are not staying in the same household. But these are just temporary. And if we can see that all these things that we are doing is temporary uh, for a better future, then most of us can actually reframe our mind to, 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 to keep doing the right thing. And so what makes a person resilient? Uh, to me, there are these 10 things that make a person resilient. Uh, and you can broadly summarize them under three pillars. So you have your physical well-being, meaning that you need to sleep, you need to eat well, you need to exercise so that you keep your physical well-being. And then you have your social pillar where you need strong relationship. You need to be socially involved so that you see that there's a purpose of uh, being uh, socially responsible uh, and socially involved can be involving in different manner. You can be socially involved in this battle of COVID-19 by um, asking your social network uh, to practice uh, what is necessary. Uh, you can join uh, as uh, community volunteers uh, to, to help out with uh, what your community may need uh, in this fight for COVID-19 and the rest is really your psychological aspect where um, a resilient person is often uh, very flexible and they are able to reframe as the situation arises. So, well, stay at home, uh, exercising at home may not be things that uh, I'm used to. I, I used to go to the gym and, and, and I used to uh, exercise in a group, but now I have to exercise alone. It, it is difficult, but a person who is resilient will be able to reframe and say, well, it is uh, the time to do it now and uh, I can have fun at home too uh, and, and start to uh, use YouTube videos. Or There are actually a lot of apps these days that helps you to exercise at home. Um, and then we are also talking about the person who is resilient are uh, actually non-judgmental and they have good control of their emotions. Uh, they, they are aware of their emotions and they are able to control it well. I mean, in these difficult times, a lot of us will feel different uh, waves of emotions. Uh, first is to be aware of these emotions and how the emotions actually affect our thinking, our action and then to be able to control these emotions. And so uh, because resilience uh, is a huge topic, 
and uh, it can take days to talk about it. And uh, I only have like 15 minutes today. So I'm going to give you a shorter than Reader Digest version on how, right? How to be more resilient, Susan. And, and so today we are just going to focus on the topic of mindfulness. Because uh, if you can practice mindfulness, then you are able to control your emotions better. You can be non-judgmental. And if you're mindful of the situation, you are able to uh, react to it in a flexible manner and you can refrain. Again, mindfulness can take a long time to learn. And I've been practicing mindfulness for almost three decades now. And uh, I, I don't have the wonderf wonderful of time to tell you to share with you all about mindfulness. And again, I'm going to summarize it for you in really short. Mindfulness is to be awake and aware in the present moment. And uh, a lot of people say, yeah, I, I know, but what does all these words actually mean? You know, uh, to me, is it is about firstly to stop living our life in the autopilot mode. And a lot of us has been living our life in the autopilot mode. In the morning, we wake up, uh, we wash up, we get dressed, we go to work, we go to school, and then we do our work and we go out lunch with our friends, uh, our colleagues, our classmates, and then we come home. So, so all these things is a habit and you are in the habit for so long, you just do it without thinking, right? And therefore, sometimes when we get up, uh, we don't feel so well, but because we do it without thinking, we, uh, even if we feel a little unwell, we get dressed and we go to work as well. And uh, this is where we can see some uh, transmission uh, at the workplaces. So how can you be more mindful? Uh, firstly, so pay attention to your body sensation. So mindfulness is really about looking inwards, uh, looking inwards on your bodily sensations, uh, looking inwards, paying attention to your feelings, to your thoughts, to, to the birds in your head, the inner commentaries, uh, often not so helpful in a speech, uh, to the judgment uh, uh, of your judgment around you, of the world. Uh, oh, the person is wearing a mask. Uh, is the person sick? It, it, is what the person is trying to do? You know, when we, as human beings, we judge the world all the time. When we see somebody doing something, there's always these birds flying around your head. And mindfulness is to pay attention to all these birds. So how do we do that? First, we need to be able to stop. Uh, what the birds in our head actually ask us to do. So, for example, if we are feeling bored, the first thing to do is to, to get out, right? Get out of the house and do something. A change of environment made us feel less bored. Uh, but now in this uh, climate, uh, when you feel bored, uh, you need to be mindful that, hey, you cannot just open the door and get out and, and change the environment. You, you need to try to uh, deal with your boredom at home. Right, so the first thing is to stop your habitual response and choose to do the right thing. A lot of people think that we have no choice, but actually, if you stop your habitual response, then you find that, hey, actually, I can choose to do something else at home. Uh, may not be what you are used to be doing, but uh, you can actually do something. So, for example, I've just signed out on uh, Coursera uh, and, uh, to take a course uh, offered by Yale University. And the best thing about it, it is free. So, how can you be more mindful? It is for you to be more aware of the birds in your head, whether it's your thoughts, your feelings. And then without rejecting them, without changing them. So a lot of people, when they try to practice mindfulness, they say, okay, okay, uh, I cannot have negative thoughts in my head. I, 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 all my thoughts must be positive. Uh, that's not what mindfulness is about. Mindfulness is about for you to be aware that, oh, okay, I have negative thoughts. Okay, they are not so positive now. Uh, and what you need to do is really to just take note of it, watch it, and then let them go. So you don't have to respond in a negative manner just because you have negative thoughts. All right, so all this is easier said than done, right? So what, what, what can I do? Uh, essentially, uh, being more mindful, it, 
all you need is to have about 10% knowledge that I can give it to you now. All right. So it's a 10, 20, 70. 20% 20 is where you share with others. So after this, go share with others uh, online, uh, through the phone, share with your family members. And the 70% is really for you to practice, practice, practice. So I'm going to share with you two practices that you can do at home to start to be more mindful. First is your body scan. And with this, I'd like to encourage everybody to do it together with me. So what I'd like you to do now is to uh, sit up straight, uh, have your back slightly away from the back of your chair. Okay, and then uh, sit in a comfortable position. And we are going to start the body scan exercise right now. So I'd like you to close your eyes. And I'd like you to bring your attention to your left foot. How does it feel? Is there, can you feel how it's contacting the ground? And I'd like you to bring your attention up towards your left calf. How is the calf feeling? Is it tight, the muscles? And I'd like you to bring your attention up to your left knee. Is there any pain? And now I'd like you to move your attention to your left thigh. Check how is it contacting with your chair. Feel the sensation that your skin is making contact with your chair. And now I'd like you to move your attention to your right foot. How does the right feel as compared to the left? Is it making any contact with the floor? And I'd like you to move your attention up to your right calf. And I'd like you to move your attention up again to your right knee. How is it different with the left? And I'd like you to move your attention up to your right thigh. How is the contact with the chair? How does it feel? Is there any pain? Is there any itch? Does it feel sore? And now I'd like you to bring your attention to your hip. How does your hip feel? And now I'd like you to bring your attention upwards to your lower back. Is it straight? Is it away from the chair? Does it feel sore from the sitting? And I'd like you to bring your attention to your tummy area. How does that feel? Is it hungry? Or do you feel very full from your breakfast? And now I'd like you to bring your attention to your chest. As you breathe in, can you feel your chest expanding? As you breathe out, can you feel it dropping? And now I'd like you to bring your attention to your upper back. How does your upper back feel? Your shoulders? Is it sore? Is it achy? 
from all the work in front of the computer. And now I want you to bring your attention down to your left upper arm. For those who have been exercising, does your muscles feel sore? And bring your attention now lower to your left arm. And down further towards the fingers, the wrist. Is it in contact with the chair? Are they, are they in contact with your thigh? And now I want you to move your attention to the other side, your right upper arm. How do they feel as compared to the left? And I want you to bring your attention down towards your fingers, your wrists. And now I want you to bring your attention to your neck. Is it sore from your pillow last night? And move it up to your jaw. Is it tight, the muscles there? And move it up to your forehead. Are you frowning? Is the muscles tight? Release them. Break into a gentle smile. Okay, and I'd like you to open your eyes and come back to the world, the reality. So how does that feel? Well, it is a simple body scan exercise. And this exercise actually helps us practice a few things. Firstly, it de-stresses us because if you move your attention to different parts of your body and when the muscles, when you're stressed, your muscles are tense and, and you can actually feel the tense muscles and you can actually choose to relax them. That's one. Two, if you do the body scan exercise daily, as I recommend, uh, then you're actually practicing discipline because uh, if you listen to my instructions as you do the exercise, uh, you realize that, hey, there might be certain parts of your body that you want to pay more attention to uh, because it's itchy or it's painful or, you know. But now, uh, Susan moved and asked me to pay attention to another part of the body. And then she then said, pay attention to another part of the body. So with this, you're actually building the discipline of letting go. Same with our thoughts, with our feelings. Sometimes we want to hold on to them for an unnecessarily long period and they make us feel not so great. But if you, we can just let go of holding on to them, they, they will just go away. And, and body scan is an amazing exercise that helps us to practice the discipline of letting go. Um, secondly, I know that um, stay at home for one month uh, may drive a lot of us crazy. Uh, and so, but remember, it's, it's just one month and uh, it will go away. And so when you are too stressed out, stay at home. Uh, some of you said the cabin fever, right? Um, what, what can you do? Uh, besides, besides your uh, body scan, you can also try this breathing exercise. So I'm, I'm giving you the second exercise right now. And for this breathing exercise, it's simply watching your breath as you breathe in and out. Uh, but in addition to just watching your breath, um, I actually like you to kind of uh, look at the way that you are breathing. So this breathing exercise has been proven to be able to lower your heart rate, uh, to be able to lower your blood pressure as well. However, you need to do it in the correct manner. And so 
in order to do it in the correct manner, usually when I teach my class, I will ask them to imagine the stomach to be like a balloon. And when you put air into the balloon, the balloon needs to inflate. And when the air comes out, the balloon then deflates, right? And so remember, when you breathe in, the stomach rise. And when you breathe out, the stomach falls. However, when we do deep breathing these days, a lot of people suck in their stomach when they breathe in. And then when they breathe out, the stomach comes out as well, which is the opposite way. And so what I'd like you to do is, again, uh, to sit up straight, uh, keep your back away from the back of the chair. And only for the first out-breath, we are going to start with an out-breath first instead of an in-breath. That means you're going to... Uh, uh, so you're out, you're, you're going to breathe out first, right? Okay, so the first out breath, you are actually going to uh, roll out as much air as possible, as hard as possible, as long as possible, so that you actually suck in your stomach. And then you breathe in and out normally. Don't have to take in deep breath because when you breathe in and out normally, then you will see that when you breathe in, the stomach actually rises. All right, and we are going to do this for a short period of time, just 20 counts. Everybody ready? You can choose to close your eyes or you can choose to open your eyes. Uh, so let's all start with the first long and hard out breath. Okay, uh, you may want to put your hand on your stomach above your navel button to see how your stomach is actually rising up and down. So let's start. So let's start by blowing out, compressing our stomach. And now you breathe in, feeling your stomach rise. And then you breathe out, feeling your stomach fall. And you breathe in again, feeling your stomach rise. And breathe out, feeling your stomach fall. Continue doing that. Just take normal breath. You don't have to take deep breath at all. At any time, if you feel that your stomach is uh, not the right way, you can always go out to the first out breath. Focusing on the rise and fall of your stomach. As you breathe in, your stomach rise. And it falls as you breathe out. And as you breathe, see how you actually calm yourself. All the thoughts and the feelings, the birds around your head actually settle down at the bottom of your mind. Okay, I'd like you to open your eyes. So, these are the two exercises that you can do when you are at home um, so that it helps us to actually be a little more mindful and it helps us to be more aware of our emotions so that we can actually control them better and that's what a resilient uh, person is about. So the takeaway messages, uh, you can choose to make a difference. And like what uh, PM Lee said and the minister said yesterday, uh, we are all on the front line right now, not just the nurses and the doctors. Uh, and we all know what we have to do. It is really about social distancing, right? And, and you can choose to make a difference. You can choose to do it. And if you 
reframe your mind to say that I choose to do it, then doing it doesn't feel so difficult anymore because you choose to do it. But if you say, I have no choice, but I have to do it, then doing it feels a bit not so nice because you feel that you're being forced. So you can be the positive link. Do your body scan daily. And if you feel unwell, uh, go see a doctor immediately. Uh, don't doctor hop. Go back, see the same doctor. And if you're unwell, then stay at home. Uh, stop going through your life uh, in an autopilot mode. Uh, always ask yourself, have you washed your hands before you touch your face, before you touch your food? Uh, ask yourself, do you really need to go out? So we are not on a lockdown. We can still go out uh, for essential things. And, and ask yourself, is it really essential? Do I really need to go out? And when I'm going out, am I wearing a mask? Because these are things that we don't normally do. So reframe, do the right thing. Uh, by thinking about it in a positive way, it's easier for you to do it right. And if you feel that you're cooped up for too long at home and you're having this cabin fever, uh, go to a quiet corner, sit down and do your mindful breathing. And with that, I think together, we can win the battle because I think this quote is really beautiful. When I is replaced by we, even illness becomes wellness. So if we don't just think about I, but we think about the we, um, remember 10 people, one meter, one Singapore, uh, together we can win the battle. And thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Susan, for the excellent presentation. I enjoy the sitting uh, body scan and your mindful, my mindful breathing exercise. Yeah, I will try to do it every day. So now thank it's a so uh, Chinese session. Yeah, Chinese session. So, uh, uh, yeah. so uh, I think we can use the chant function of Zoom. So if you, uh, you you are Zoom user, you look there's a chant function, right? So if uh, any of you have questions, you can type and uh, chant. Then Susan can uh, reply. Any questions from the audience? So far, no. Okay. So maybe I can I ask you a question first. Yeah. So then. Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, you know the school uh, will be all closed, right? So next week, I think starting from Wednesday, yeah. all the schools will be closed. So uh, yeah. I'm not sure it's a good for the kids, right? But for for the parents, it may be a very difficult situation, right? You are, uh, are working from home, and then the students are studying from home. Yeah. So uh, I I I. I suspect maybe some parents will uh, find it's very difficult to, I hate to see them, but manage the children you know, at home. So any advice yeah. on uh, how to better you know, uh, handle the kids? You know, so when, when so, so we, started, we started homeschooling this week, right, for one day. And then on my Facebook, uh, there was one parent who said that she actually went out to try to buy cane, uh, and she wanted to buy four canes. Uh, because her kid keep hiding the cane, but she could only find one, and that one was kind of like uh, curved. So all the canes oh. are sold out. <laughs> right. So uh, essentially, when we are all at home, and uh, when we all need the peace to work, and when the kids are not so quiet, uh, it might be a bit distracting, and it might make us feel a little not so productive, a little more frustrated and upset at the kids. Uh, and so uh, my advice is to be aware of your emotions. Uh, most of us, when we feel upset or when we feel frustrated, uh, there are physical symptoms like your heart beat faster, you feel hot, uh, you, you feel your BP, your blood pressure is going up. And, and so when you can feel all these physical symptoms, take a time out. Go to a quiet corner, do your mindful breathing, and then come back and deal with the kids. Then you feel that you are in more control of the situation. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, there's always a timeout that you can take. Uh, do your breathing, calm yourself down, and then ask yourself, um, which is the most appropriate way to handle this situation. So you can actually choose your response even to disciplining your kids because some of us, our 
uh, habitual response to disciplining the kids is maybe to scold them, uh, uh, take away their iPad, time out for them, but maybe instead of time out for them, which will in, uh, create more resistance, uh, maybe it's time out for yourself. And then when you're more calm, then you can ask yourself, what is a better way of handling the situation right now? Yeah. Uh, do you think we can teach the kid how to do a mindful breathing? I mean, do you think that they are... Oh, yeah. They are so yeah. yeah. So if the parents are doing it, uh, they can get their kids to sit together with them. Of course, the kids will not sit uh, for as long as the parents. So I started all of you on 20 counts, right? Uh, just to make it easy for you. But actually, uh, practitioner, we practice for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, sometimes even 30 minutes. And uh, even as a long-term practitioner, we know that uh, when we have to sit down for 30 minutes, um, it's a, it's a little difficult. Our mind will wander away. We, we, we feel like we want to move. And you must expect that with your kids. If you want them to sit down and focus on their breathing for even 20 seconds, their mind will wander and they will move. So it is about uh, adjusting your expectations. It is about being non-judgmental on how the kids should behave when they sit down to do the mindful breathing with you. Because a lot of studies has done and shown that if the kids actually engage in doing mindful breathing exercises, um, it actually helps to calm them down and it actually helps to control a lot of behavioral issues in the schools. So um, in the Western world, uh, their schools are teaching the kids mindfulness. And uh, I've been with some youth and I do teach them mindfulness as well. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, so, so there's a question uh, from the audience saying that, uh, will I be able to share the mindfulness audio or video to us? Um, yes, they can actually go to YouTube and then they can actually Google uh, YouTube uh, mindfulness, uh, mindful breathing, Susan Tan, ECI, because uh, my social enterprise is actually ECI, Consulting Holdings Private Limited. So you can actually find my YouTube video uh, teaching people how to do the mindful breathing. Uh, you can also YouTube, uh, go to YouTube and find Body Scan by Susan Tan, ECI, the same thing. And you can actually see uh, and hear my instructions on how to do the body scan. Uh, essentially, yeah. when you uh, do it uh, long enough, you, you will realize that you always start on the left side of the body, the left foot, and then you slowly move it up. So we can so we can search using the searching term uh Susan Dan, uh ECI and uh, mindfulness or body scan, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I see the time now. So yeah. yeah. So thank you, Susan, again, yeah, for the excellent presentation and exercises. Yeah. So uh, we look forward to seeing all of you again next week at the same time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care. Yeah. All right. Bye. Have a good day, good weekend.